Well, you know, we um, we had written that we thought that the pullbacks were going to be pretty shallow because of all the liquidity. And and yet I think we're getting near the end of that game. Uh, and and I would expect to see a 10. I'd, I'd like to see actually a 10 percent to 15 percent pullback so that we can sort of recalibrate, get adjusted and then move up from there. So I I found I found this morning's move heartening. And then this afternoon, as we kind of came back a little bit uh, disappointing, because I think we need a little bit of a sell off. Uh, Morgan Stanley chairman and CEO James Gorman uh, called into the show uh, moments ago and discussed whether the bank's considering reinstating its buyback. The firm's on strong footing. Our businesses, our businesses are doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is performing in a difficult environment. We're under no capital stress. And as you said, we should be maintaining our dividend. It's a source of income for many, many millions of individuals out there who rely upon the bank's dividends. But as to the buyback and reinstituting that, it's too soon now. I would think, uh, you know, over the next several months, we'll be, we'll be looking at bringing the buyback uh, back. It won't be imminent, uh, but it's certainly not going to be years. Clearly he's saying it's too soon to make any commitments now. But, uh, Mike, the very fact to mention that it's possible several months from now uh, kind of changes the conversation from fear of whether the dividends are going to be cut and, and ask the question when uh, buybacks might come back in. And, and again, talks to the strength that management of some of these banks feel they're in relative to a couple of months ago and uh, could certainly be a, uh, an extra boost to the, the bank stocks if we did see them reinstituted uh, at some point in 2020. Yeah, for sure. If you look at the credit market indicators or any other uh, signal that would tell you what the stress outlook is for, uh, for the whole system, you would say that, you know, the, the move to suspend dividends was at a very different environment than we have right now. And presumably, if things continue to to, to uh, improve from here, uh, what will be in, in a few months. So what will be interesting is, are they going to be coordinated about bringing the buybacks, uh, you know, back the way they were with suspending them? But um, uh, it, it also makes sense, though, because, you know, these, these institutions are not built to just kind of accumulate excess capital. Uh, maybe, maybe you can make the dividend call as opposed to buyback. But it's not a surprise that they'd be looking for that opportunity to reinstate Nancy, I, I feel like what's lost uh, in, in some of the discussion of the markets lately is, is the fact that COVID-19 cases are rising in about a dozen states right now, including big economically important states like California and Texas and Florida. Arizona is a particular hotspot right now. I mean, how are investors watching that news? It, it feels like they're not as sensitive to those kind of headlines as they were a few months ago. No, I think you're right, Sarah. I don't think it's really entering into the conversation as much uh, in recent weeks. I live in Arizona, and the cases have spiked, um, but you wouldn't know it. I, I was out uh, last night, and there, the bar that I was at was packed, and uh, nobody was wearing a mask. So I, I'm not, I, I don't have an opinion because I don't really know, um, you know what, what the, the trajectory is going to look like. We're pretty distant here in Arizona from one another in general. But I don't, I don't hear that amongst my colleagues. What people are talking about is, you know, multiples and earnings growth and sustainability of the rally. Uh, they're not talking about COVID anymore. Let's move on to Apple. Apple reportedly set to ditch Intel in favor of using its own chips in Mac computers. Josh Lipton with the details. Josh, how big of a deal is this? So, Sarah, Apple's chip guru member is an executive named Johnny Shruji, and he's apparently been pretty busy. Apple is reportedly preparing now here to announce a big shift to its own main processors in Macs, licensing technology from ARM, and that would mean replacing chips from Intel, the new Macs will apparently roll out next year. And I'll say this won't have a big financial impact for Intel. By their math, Apple is a single-digit customer, but it could be a reputation hit, they say, for the chip giant. As for Apple, this shows that Tim Cook's company is controlling more and more of its own products from end to end, and from the operating system to the main processors. And by the way, that stock now tracking for its best quarter since 2012. Guys, back to you. Another 3% move. Wow. And Apple, Josh, thank you. Nancy, you buy Apple on this news? Do you sell the chip stocks? How do you, how do you interpret that? Yeah, you know, I, I, we, own, we own both. We own Apple and Intel. We own a lot more of Apple. I think it's great news from a vertical integration standpoint. Um, it's pretty rich on all of our metrics, however. So uh, if you don't own it, I don't have very good advice. But if you do, uh, clearly you hang on uh, as long as you can because this is a safe, 
trade with uh, pretty, pretty sure growth in the future. And it's a well-managed company. I mean, they didn't suspend their buyback either. Uh, and they you know, are due to increase the dividends. So I, I like my holdings and I'm sticking with them.